our last speaker for the night, last but not, le but, but not least, <laughs> is the dream matcher himself, Ali Shahadi. We all know. We all know about the dream matcher, right? This entrepreneur has got this crazy idea, and it's magically working not only in Lebanon, but people want to adopt it all over the world. Um, it looks like this today, lots of post-its and happy people, but did it always look like this? Let's listen to his talk, Pivots and Dreams. Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Ali, founder of The Dream Matcher. Who have been to The Dream Matcher before? Wow, impressive. Who have heard of it but have not been there? Okay, cool. I hope you can join us sometime. So I hope that my talk today will inspire you to turn your fuck-ups into building blocks towards your success. Okay? Um, so this morning I saw this video on uh, Facebook and I'll tell you a little bit why it's really significant. Look at this kid grabbing like alive lobsters and doing what? <laughs> Trying to eat it. And he's like, what? His dad apparently told him, don't do it. And he was like, what? Why? Okay? <laughs> Us as kids, we really don't have the concept of messing up. We don't have the concept of being judged. This kid was not worried about being judged or someone telling him, why the hell are you doing this? You shouldn't be doing this. It was just like being himself. I, he wants to eat the, the lobster. But um, as we grow, what happens, we go to school uh, and suddenly we start getting fed that, hey, you should not fail. Uh, anything wrong you do as a kid, um, you're punished for it. You're judged. Um, and when kids fail in school, for example, what do we do? We focus on their failures. We hire tutors because they're failing at this subject. We punish them because they're failing at this subject. This is when us start learning, hey, you should not make mistakes because it's wrong, because it's shameful. Um, but what if we focused on the positives instead of focusing on the failure? Or even better, what if we turned those failures into opportunity to understand where the successes can be hidden? That's where I thought and I got to accept the fact that, hey, I want to accept failure. I want failure to become part of um, what builds me as an entrepreneur. And I labeled myself as an experimental entrepreneur. I love doing experiments. As, I, as you know, scientists, when they do experiments, they always expect failure, most, more likely than even a success. Uh, a success. So um, I love experimenting with entrepreneurship. And this definitely results in a lot of different fuck-ups. So if we look at here, this is like a, a very brief sort of a timeline of a lot of different fuck-ups in, in my life. Um, uh, and the slide is a little bit fucked up, but I'll... Uh, um, Infijarat.com is a website I made two years ago. It was all over the news. It, it was in stealth mode. Uh, it was allowed people to predict where the next bomb will happen in Beirut. Um, <laughs> it was on the news and people were asking to kill me and no one knew who did it. So <laughs> Now you know. Um, together forever, I was, trying to sell, I was trying to sell pixels to people on Valentine's Day so they can put their pictures on my website, just like the million dollar homepage if you've uh, heard of it. Pumpkin, it's a Tinder for shopping. Pick a side was a market research app where you pick one of two things, Pepsi or Coke. Um, all those are uh, dead today. Skill pills, I organize events to help people uh, build their skills. And the shakery is something new I'm working on. Uh, it's a juice bar. And Just Peanuts is a peanut butter brand <laughs> that I just launched a few uh, months ago. And what's interesting about Just Peanuts is that this was an overnight idea. I was like just inspired to sell peanut butter and then I learned how to make it and then I 
packaged it, I branded it, and then next week I was selling it. <laughs> um, but really, the, what I want to put, I can't, show how they ask, I'm not sure if it's a little bit. Um, what really we want to focus on is the Dream Matcher. A lot of people join the Dream Matcher events today, and um, what they don't know is how the Dream Matcher started. A lot of people ask me, and how did you get the idea? I really hate that question, but this is, here's the story. I come from a media production background. I'm a TV producer. Uh, some of you might see me now, like every Friday on Future TV with Zaven, and that's my actual background. And a few years ago, I thought I wanted to create a TV show where people get the opportunity to turn other people's dreams to reality. I did not want to work with sponsors. I did not want to work with rich people. I wanted average people to help average people with their um, dreams. Well, TV is a really hard world, and it did not work out. You did not see that show because it did not work out. So I put this whole thing on hibernation. What happens next is that I went to the States. I was doing my master's degree in media management, and I happened to stumble upon a book called The Accidental Billionaires. The Accidental Billionaires is a book about the story of the startup of Facebook. It's very sensational. It's not the real story. But it did inspire me to make something big. I was like, I want to be an accidental billionaire too. And I was thinking, what can I do? What, what can make me billions of dollars? And then the Dream Matcher, it was not yet called the Dream Matcher, struck me again. I thought, hey, this could be turned into a social network because social networks were a trend and still are. So I thought I wanted to turn the Dream Matcher idea into a website. And that was the big thing, 2010, people built social networks. So this is the Dream Matcher homepage. What you're seeing here was the result of two whole years of fuck-ups. $20,000 of cash that I did not, I barely even had. Um, it was my first startup, and every single mistake you can imagine was done in that startup. Um, and all those mistakes were definitely big fuck-ups of mine, but they helped me today when I talk to um, early stage entrepreneurs, I really can see myself. And just a few tips about what went wrong. First off, I was not really aware of what is called the lean startup methodology, how to build things in a very lean and efficient manner whereby you're not just throwing a lot of money into building something that you don't know if it's gonna work or not. Um, I had multiple teams work on this. I never had a co-founder, so I'd always grab people, hey, I want your help, I want your help. And this does not really work. You want people to be dedicated. But we did launch the website, and the website went online and did not go anywhere, though. Now, what happened somewhere before or during run launching the website is that I was in a conversation with someone, and I was inspired to turn this whole concept into a real-life thing. I was like, hey, why don't we try it in real life? Why don't we get people in real life and try to see how can we match their dreams? What if we have 50 people who do not know each other? What if we know their dreams? And what if people in the same room can make those dreams come true? So I wanted to try, and I booked Alt City, this right here. And I booked a date. I told them I want a date two weeks from now to do an event. And guess what? I did not know what the hell am I going to do during the event. I was like, I'm, I just want to match people. How are we going to do it? I really did not know. The day came, and it was very experimental. And uh, we definitely collected a lot of feedback. So that's really important when you're, when, when you're building your startup. Collect feedback. And today, three years later, the Dream Matcher has held 50 events in Lebanon and around the world. Almost more than 1,500 people have attended our events. What happened to our website? Nothing. Just dead. It's not there anymore. So I stopped all online things because guess what? I saw that the offline version is getting successful and I saw people coming and paying money to be part of this event. So I thought that, hey, there it is. And my biggest learning from all these things, especially as a uh, as an early stage entrepreneur is when you're looking at your goal that's up there, don't try just to jump to it. You have to take the steps to reach there without investing a lot and expecting a lot without um, investing much. 
So these are some pictures from the uh, event. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, what kept me going through this whole thing is that I think that I work based on a purpose and not based on a, uh, a product. I did not build the Dream Matcher because I thought the Dream Matcher works. I built the Dream Matcher because my passion and my purpose in life to help other people achieve their goals, achieve their dreams, and be what they want to be. So that purpose was guiding me. So it did not really matter whether the Dream Matcher, the website worked, or the TV show worked, because there was a lot of different ways that could help me achieve the same goal. So when you really have a purpose in what you're doing, it will not matter a small failure of an event or a product or an experiment would not matter because in the bigger scheme of things, you can keep trying different things. And that's what happened with um, the Dream Matcher. So that's my story. And I hope uh, to see you guys sometime soon at uh, the Dream Matcher experience here at Elk City. Thank you. Thank you, great. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, love. Ah, there. I see uh, some of the questions. Sorry. You usually run your events, so I'm running this time today. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 Okay, so my question is, you know, um, how do you keep track of all your projects? How do you give each of them the commitment that, they're, that they need to actually succeed? Yani? How do you manage your time? I'm sure each of these by themselves could be a full-time thing if you put, you know, your all Well, all definitely your time. those things are, did not all happen at the same time. So at any given time, I'm probably working on two or top three things. Um, I sort of try to manage my time. I know that uh, a lot of people tell you you need to focus on one thing, and that, that's right, that's not wrong. But uh, I sort of find enjoyment in doing multiple things, and I like to live what I call a multi-track life. I don't like living a single track life when I'm just doing the same thing or walking, uh, going towards a single goal. Um, and uh, yes, it does come with disadvantages of not ha having the, the time or even the money or the resources to focus on one thing, um, but I enjoy it. Uh, any advice you would give to someone who wants to do the same thing? To do multiple things at the same yeah. time? Like, yeah, uh, just be realistic about what each one of those things requires. Yeah, and I, would not run two major things at the same time. Uh, if something would take, let's say, uh, five hours of your day, make sure that the second thing that you want to work on takes two hours of your day. Okay? So don't work on multiple major things at the same time. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. George? So uh, you were talking about $20,000. And, and look, I've, I've started lots of endeavors none of them have required any such uh, amount of money and I don't think I could ever drum that up anyway. But here's my question is, you were studying in the US and how do you manage to, like, are, is it like from small jobs and are you living frugally or how do you, how do you drum up that kind of money? The $20,000, well definitely were, were spent throughout two years of my life and they were spent in small amounts. It was not... Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I had some money saved up. I don't spend a lot of money so I'm a good saver <laughs> um, and uh, I did win a bunch of competitions uh, with my pitches so I had the money but really I definitely do not think that I would have spent even 10% of that if I had done the same thing today so definitely don't take me wrong on that but uh, it went I'm sure if, I mean, if you're curious about where did this money go I hired a lot of people so I would pay people uh, like literally monthly salaries that uh, and then nothing happens, and then I, um, I bought DreamMatcher.com for $1,000. Um, How much did that one hurt? What? How much did that one hurt? It, it really hurt. <laughs> I mean, it was someone like, I met this guy from Silicon Valley, and you know, like, yeah, Silicon Valley. He's like, you know, you should buy that domain, and then the next day I'm buying it. <laughs> it was like, I had the DreamMatcher.com. Uh, but yeah, I was like, he's from Silicon Valley, he should know something about startups, I need to buy that domain. 
Um, I spent $1,000 on a domain name. I, uh, like, just like random money here and there. A lot of Facebook ads. I thought that Facebook ads make things work. Make things work. They don't. Um, so yeah. Uh, no, no, the renewal fee is regular. It's just once you acquire the domain name from, from the guy. Uh, it was some, it, uh, someone owned it and they wanted to sell it and they asked for a thousand. Well, I, well, well to, my, to, to my defense, I did negotiate it down from 1800. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, so for the online platform, why do you think it just didn't work? Because everyone's trying to start online platforms now. And for your concept, it makes sense. You're matching people. But why didn't it work for I you? I didn't have the experience. I, I've never built a website. I know nothing about building websites. I come from a media production background. I know things about photography and video production. I don't know how to run a team to run a website. I, like, I really didn't. I did not know anything about um, uh, lean startup methodology. I did not know anything about validation, like how to test the product before it goes. I really did not know anything. It was just like me wanting to do something and then just trying. Uh, it, re it, did not, uh, it did not work because I did not know how to make it work. I do think that this something can work eventually and now I try to look at it as the other way around, hoping that the events would allow me to grow into an online platform. Hey, so I think it's interesting that with the Dream Matcher website, you had investment and you had a product and you had a website go on and you had no like feedback guiding it and it, and it completely tanked. And then you had your Dream Matcher event and you said like you didn't really know what you were doing and you just kind of winged it, but you got feedback and now it's the wonderful international success that it is now. So I mean, at least when I hear that, I'm thinking that can be generalized to some other different industries, to other entrepreneurs about the value of, of customer validation and of, uh, of understanding the needs of your market. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the learning experience from this is be attentive to what people are saying. It might not be direct feedback. Um, and be open to trying different things. Um, I was not closed-minded, I was like, no, no, I want this to be online, otherwise I don't want to do it. Because again, as I said, my goal was not a website. My goal was to build something that would help people achieve their dreams. And I saw that people liked the events. I, until today, at least 60 or 70 people come to each of our events. And I saw that's an opportunity, and the website isn't working for now, so let's just put that into hibernation and work on what actually is working. Um, oh. Hi. So I have three questions. Wow, three yeah. questions. Um, uno, um, would you, like, is the Dream Matcher website off? Khalas, it's out of the way, the, or the would Dream you go Matcher, back to it? The Dream the Matcher company? website is now used to promote the events. But would you go back to the online platform? Yeah, I do have after. a vision of building the events today into an online platform. Okay. and multiple ways, so yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, okay, second question. Um, so you have a day job, kind of. Like, w why didn't you, like, you're, you have a successful thing going on. Why didn't you quit to focus more on your thing? Uh, would you, uh, okay. wouldn't you? I don't really have a day job. I, I've never had a day job, day job uh, at least not for an extended period of time. What I try to do is find jobs that pay a lot, and consume very little time. So uh, my TV production job right now pays a lot. Uh, if you want to know how much, we can discuss that later. <laughs> but it only takes a total of probably 10 hours of my time every week. And it does pay a lot. OK? So just another tip. Look for opportunities where uh, you would work little but gain a lot of money. As an entrepreneur, that's very helpful. And where, where can we get peanut? Or peanut butter? The peanut uh, thing? No, we sell, we sell peanut butter. They're out. They're, out. they're always out. <laughs> peanuts, peanuts. Uh, but by the way, uh, a, a, a tip about this. You, you're a media producer. What I used to do as a media producer is that people would get, ask me for quotations. If it costs $200, I would tell them it costs $1,000. And what I would do is that I would wait for the person who would accept the $1,000 offer 
but then I'm only working one job instead of doing like five jobs to get this uh, $1,000. I try to find the person who would pay me the big amount for just one job. So just try to add as much value as you can to your time. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have two questions, in a matter of fact. So, um, what was your basic motive that made you like read to the dream catcher and um, the dream re matcher? Read, Dr read, create. Oh. Yeah, create. Okay. Like, of okay. course, you said that. Like, it's the result of many fucked up new lives, right? So, also, the other question is, where do you see yourself going five years from now? Uh, going where? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Okay, um, I'll start with this question. I'm, I mean, I'm really not a fan. It has never worked out with me or with any person I know that they projected something five years from now. I, I want to see myself as a hopefully successful person who is having positive influence on people's lives, disregarding what I'm doing. And I follow that with my everyday steps. Um, I hope to be living in Silicon Valley because I love it. I've lived there for a short period, so I'd love to move there sometime. Uh, but for your first question, what was my motive to create the yeah, Dream Matcher? The yeah, the motive uh, that made you like it's create. Really, because I, it was like a light bulb moment where I thought that uh, there's a lot of resources in a community where people can help each other achieve their dreams. And I thought that I want to build something that would unleash that power. Because do you know that today in this crowd, there is a really high chance that someone can make one of your dreams come true. And that's real. If we do, some, do an experiment right now, you'll find that person. And I really wanted to give this to people, give this opportunity to people. And I saw it work, and I just stuck to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.